sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you today in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Today we delve into one of the most powerful and spiritually vital practices that Jesus himself taught, the casting out of demonic spirits through prayer and fasting. In this fallen world, we are constantly in a spiritual battle, and the forces of darkness seek to keep God's people oppressed, bound, and separated from the freedom that is found in Jesus Christ. The enemy is active, but through the authority of Jesus Christ, coupled with faith, prayer, and fasting, we can overcome the powers of darkness. Our key passage, Matthew 17, 18 to 24, presents a moment when the disciples of Jesus struggled to cast out a demon from a young boy. It is here that Jesus reveals the spiritual keys to unlocking supernatural power and overcoming the demonic realm. Let us read the scripture to set the foundation for our sermon today. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 18 to 21. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, seeking your wisdom, your power, and your guidance as we study your word. Open our hearts and minds to the truth of prayer and fasting. Help us to grow in our faith and walk in the authority you have given us to cast out demons and overcome all the forces of darkness. Strengthen us through your Holy Spirit, and may this message be a light to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The passage begins with Jesus demonstrating his absolute authority over the demonic realm. When a father brought his demon-possessed son to the disciples for healing, they could not cast the demon out. However, Jesus, with a single rebuke, drove the devil out, and the child was healed immediately. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Matthew 17 or 18. This moment highlights a powerful truth. Jesus has complete authority over the devil and all demonic spirits. There is no demon, no power of darkness that can withstand the authority of Christ. Colossians 2.15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Jesus triumphed over Satan and the demonic forces through his death and resurrection, and he has given us the same authority as his followers. Yet, the disciples' inability to cast out the demon raises an important question. Why were they unsuccessful? After all, in Matthew 10, 1, Jesus had already given them authority over unclean spirits. This brings us to a key part of the lesson. After the boy was delivered, the disciples came to Jesus privately and asked, Why could not we cast him out? Matthew 17, 19. This is a question many believers have asked when faced with spiritual warfare or a battle they feel powerless against. We must understand that even with spiritual authority, there are times when we struggle to see results. Jesus answered them because of your unbelief, Matthew 17, 20. Unbelief, or lack of faith, hinders the flow of God's power. Even though the disciples had been given authority, their faith had faltered in this moment, and that is why they were unable to cast out the demon. Jesus then continues with a profound truth about the power of faith. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew 17, 20. The mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds, yet Jesus uses it as a metaphor to show that even the smallest amount of true faith, when placed in God, 
can move mountains. It's not about the size of our faith, it's about the sincerity and focus of that faith in Christ. This applies to every aspect of our spiritual battles, including casting out demons. If we believe, even the most impossible situations can be changed. However, in this particular case, Jesus highlights that there is more needed than just faith alone. In Matthew 17, 21, Jesus reveals a key to unlocking spiritual power that goes beyond ordinary faith. He says, Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Here, Jesus is teaching that some demonic forces, strongholds, and spiritual battles require deeper spiritual discipline and preparation, specifically through prayer and fasting. Fasting combined with prayer is a powerful tool that sharpens our spiritual sensitivity, weakens the flesh, and opens the door to God's supernatural power. Jesus teaches us that while faith is essential, certain kinds of demonic strongholds are so entrenched that they require prayer and fasting to be defeated. Let's look closely at these two spiritual disciplines. Prayer is the foundation of every believer's relationship with God. It is through prayer that we communicate with God, align ourselves with His will, and access His power. James 5.16 reminds us, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer releases God's power into our situations and brings about supernatural results. When dealing with demonic oppression or spiritual warfare, prayer becomes our most powerful weapon. Through prayer, we invite the Holy Spirit to intervene. We rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus, and we command the forces of darkness to flee. Ephesians 6.18 instructs us to pray, always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. This means that our prayers are not just words. They must be Spirit-led fervent and rooted in true faith. Fasting, on the other hand, is the practice of denying the body food or other physical comforts for a spiritual purpose. It is an act of humbling ourselves before God, denying the flesh, so that we may hear from the Holy Spirit more clearly and grow in spiritual strength. Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Fasting, when done with the right heart, breaks spiritual yokes and releases God's freedom. Fasting increases our spiritual sensitivity, making us more attuned to the Holy Spirit's guidance, and more aware of spiritual realities. When we fast, we deny our physical desires in order to focus more fully on our spiritual connection with God. In doing so, we weaken the influence of the flesh and strengthen the influence of the spirit. When prayer and fasting are combined, they create a powerful force that breaks the chains of demonic bondage. This is why Jesus emphasized that certain strongholds can only be broken through prayer and fasting. Why are fasting and prayer necessary for casting out certain demons? The answer lies in the spiritual warfare that takes place in the unseen realm. Ephesians 6.12 reminds us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The demonic realm is real, and the forces of darkness are constantly at work to oppress, deceive, and destroy. In some cases, demonic oppression can be deeply rooted, with demons holding on to a person or situation with great force. It is in these cases that fasting and prayer become crucial. Fasting weakens the enemy's hold by weakening the flesh and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in greater power. When we combine fasting with prayer, we position ourselves to receive God's supernatural strength and discernment to overcome the enemy. Jesus' teaching here also reveals that spiritual victories require preparation. If we are to be effective in deliverance, we cannot be passive or unprepared. Prayer and fasting are preparatory actions that strengthen our faith and empower us to face the forces of darkness with the authority of Christ. Begin with faith in Jesus' authority. Before anything else, you must believe in the authority of Jesus Christ over every demonic force. Luke 10:19 tells us, 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Your confidence comes from Jesus' victory over the enemy. Enter into prayer and fasting with humility. Fasting should never be done with pride or for show. Approach fasting with humility, seeking to draw closer to God and to hear his voice clearly. Psalm 35, 13 says, I humbled my soul with fasting. Use fasting as a time of spiritual cleansing, repenting of any sin and seeking God's presence with a sincere heart. Pray with authority. When casting out demons, use the name of Jesus with authority. Mark 16, 17 says, In my name shall they cast out devils. It is not your own strength that casts out demons, but the power of Jesus working through you. Stand firm in faith and command the demons to leave in the name of Jesus. Combine prayer with the word of God. Use scripture in your prayers, as Jesus did when he faced Satan in the wilderness. Matthew 4. Speak God's word over the situation, declaring his promises and the authority of his word. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is a weapon against the enemy. Persevere in fasting and prayer. Deliverance can sometimes take time. There may be multiple layers of spiritual bondage that need to be broken. Do not be discouraged if the results are not immediate. Persevere in fasting and prayer, trusting that God will bring deliverance in his perfect timing. Beloved brothers and sisters, before we move forward, I want to share a personal testimony from my own life, one that demonstrates the very power of fasting and prayer in the face of demonic oppression. In 2022, I faced one of the most difficult spiritual battles of my life. Through going back to sin and my own spiritual fall, I found myself vulnerable to the schemes of the enemy, and before long I became possessed by demonic forces. It was a dark time, the torment and oppression were overwhelming, and I could feel the enemy working to destroy my spirit, my peace, and my connection with God. It seemed as though every area of my life was being attacked, but God in his mercy showed me the way out. He reminded me of the power of fasting and prayer, of drawing closer to him in my time of greatest need. For days, even weeks, I entered into intensive fasting and fervent prayer. It wasn't easy. The battle was fierce, and there were moments when I felt like giving up. But God sustained me. Slowly but surely, as I pressed into him, the chains of demonic oppression began to break. I experienced the Lord's deliverance and healing as he freed me from the grip of the enemy. The demons fled in the face of the power of God's word and the discipline of fasting. This was not an overnight process. It took time, perseverance, and total reliance on God. But I stand here today as a testimony to his saving power, knowing that the same deliverance he granted me, he offers to each and every one of you. Today, as I preach this message, I find myself entering another season of fasting and prayer. As I stand before you, I'm preparing to embark on a three to seven day fast, starting today, Friday the 6th. I am inviting each of you who are listening, who are facing demonic oppression, spiritual battles, or challenges that seem insurmountable to join me in this fast. Together, we will seek deliverance, healing, and the presence of God in our lives. This time, I find myself battling again. Recently, a valuable Christian relationship in my life was crushed, and I know that it was the schemes of the enemy at work. The enemy seeks to destroy that which is good, to break us down, and to crush our spirits. But remember this, while the devil may win certain battles, he will always lose the war. Victory belongs to Jesus Christ, and we must draw near to him, even in our darkest moments, to claim that victory. 1 Peter 5, 8 warns us, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, 
seeking whom he may devour. The devil is intelligent, cunning, and relentless in his pursuit to lead us away from Christ. He will use whatever means necessary, including relationships, to draw us into sin or despair. That is why we must be prudent and wise, grounded in the word of God and clothed in the armor of faith and righteousness. I share this testimony with you not to glorify the battle, but to glorify the God who has given me victory through fasting and prayer. If you find yourself struggling, oppressed, or in need of deliverance, I encourage you to join me on this fast. Let us come together in faith, knowing that God is more than able to break every chain, to heal every wound, and to restore what the enemy has stolen. Let us fast with purpose, seeking not only deliverance, but a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. He is our victory. He is our deliverer. And he is faithful to bring us through every storm. Brothers and sisters, the power to cast out demons and overcome the forces of darkness has been given to us through Jesus Christ. But as Jesus taught in Matthew 17 to 21, some spiritual battles require the added depth and discipline of fasting and prayer. These practices are not optional. They are vital tools in our spiritual arsenal. As we apply the principles of fasting and prayer, we can experience the supernatural power of God in our lives and see deliverance for ourselves and others. Let us commit ourselves to these spiritual disciplines, growing in faith, breaking strongholds, and walking in the victory that Jesus has already secured for us. Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wisdom and truth found in your word. Help us to grow in faith, to deepen our prayer lives, and to embrace the discipline of fasting. Strengthen us for the spiritual battles we face and empower us to cast out every demonic force in the name of Jesus. May we walk in your victory and bring freedom to those who are oppressed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the power of prayer and fasting. The faith and resilience that come through these spiritual disciplines are transformative, and I pray that this message has strengthened your walk with God. We are excited to announce that Bible Adventures for Children is coming soon. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun and engaging way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children because as you know, the dark forces are targeting our children and they are the future of our world and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We now extend an invitation to you not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com where you will discover a free blog, Christian canvas art, and a vast range of Christian books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to understand the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen. <music>